Hello friends, Music Man from His Man Cave. Today we're going to discuss digital keyboards versus acoustic pianos. Digital keyboards, acoustic pianos. Um, had an interesting meeting a couple of weeks ago and this was a heated topic of conversation. Which is better? Let's discuss it right now. Well, you're going to run into this all the time. Do you ever run into someone that says, they don't make cars today like the, they did back in the good old days, back in the 1950s. I mean, when the hood, you only had a lap belt and the hood would come off and chop your head off. I mean, we need to go back to the good old days of making cars. You ever run into someone that says an 8-track was better than a CD? Or now they're saying CDs are better than digital recordings. You know, I, I'm running into that with keyboards. Uh, digital keyboards used to be junk. I mean, they used to be some serious junk. I had one. I had a little Yamaha little keyboard. It's about this big, and it was fun. You could sit and you could record into it, and you could, you know, push the buttons and, uh, you know, and that light up and show you what to play and stuff like that. They were toys. They were junk. Uh, kind of like when Jap the first the first Japanese cars came into America. If you remember, uh, they were tinny and they rusted out and they, you know, but they ran and they ran and they ran and they ran. Well, now we have these wonderful uh, digital keyboards and they're amazing. What's happened is what used to be in $10,000 keyboards has now trickled down into $1,000 keyboards. So I did my research, I was careful. And I decided this year for District Music Festival, since our pianos were so outdated, uh, many of them need some serious repair and so forth, that I kind of found the ones that are still tunable and still decent, uh, even though their sounds are kind of muffly and they probably need some, some repair. Um, I decided to keep a, a Wurlitzer Spinet that has a really bright tinny sound. I decided to keep a Volse and Sons. I don't even know... I. I've never even seen that brand before, but it's a baby grand, and its piano is middling. I decided to keep a chickering on the stage, and it's got a pretty good sound, but it's lower bass strings. Some of the, the shell, like the metal shell, is vibrating on the string, and I found out that would cost some money to replace. So what we decided to do is, uh, and after some research, I decided to buy a couple of Kawaii CE-220s. Do your research on the Kawaii CE220. They have wooden keys. It has a, a wonderful piano sound. It has 40 watt speakers. It has a very sensitive touch. I don't know how they did it, but they did it. it, it everything from a pianissimo all the way to a fortissimo. I mean, it's it's got in everything in between. Wood keys, a graded hammer action, heavier in the bottom, lighter up top. I mean, it's a nice keyboard. Well came up in a meeting that uh, we had bought it and we bought a couple of Yamaha uh, stage pianos to use the, the P255 for instrumental. Well, that did not sit well with some of these old fuddy duddies. Ugh. I've heard this argument so many times. Ugh. Uh, acoustic pianos are better. Well, here's the deal. We have to move these pianos into some really interesting places in some narrow rooms and small rooms and so forth with small doorways and all over the building. And uh, the sampling in these digital keyboards is excellent. The Wurlitzer sounds like a honky-tonk tinny piano compared to the CE220, the Kawaii, or the Yamahas. They have actually a baby grand piano sampling sound in them. And we're using them for accompaniment. Now, there's no debate... If you were going to have a recital on a piano, or you were going to play at Carnegie Hall that a full grand piano made by Steinway, or some of these other you know high names in the piano world, Yamaha and and uh, I think there's a Borsendorfer, or uh, you guys know them better than me. Uh, yeah, they're they're amazing instruments. They're they're superior because they have a acoustic soundboard. But, if you're in a tiny little room that seats about 20, 30 people, and someone's going to sing uh, an Italian art song, and you're just going to accompany them, 
a, a, a Kauai CE220 is more than adequate. It's loud enough. It, it literally is loud enough to fill up an entire choir room right now. And my room is huge. And it has a, a really rich bass sound. And it has a really nice uh, mid-range. Really brings out the melody all the way to not too tinny in the, the upper end. It's pretty impressive piano. So I went away and I around and played all these pianos, and I discovered that they're all different. Every one of them is different. The Volse and Son sounds different than the Wurlitzer Spinet and, and, and on, on around. So here's the deal. When it comes to saying just flat out, an acoustic piano is better. Well, it depends. How portable is it? Is it on rollers? We have an upright piano that weighs a ton. I kid you not, it weighs a ton. And to try to move it, it has these tiny little wheels, and there's no cart made for, a, 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 I'd like to, I haven't seen it, for a piano this heavy. I mean, this, this is one heavy piano. Literally, it will tear the carpet up. It will scrape up the floors if you try to move it. And so I'm surplusing it out. It's not worth anything. Someone gave it to the school, and it doesn't stay in tune very well. And so it depends. Uh, uh, the the Kawaii CE220s, and you can look at them right here on YouTube. There's a whole bunch of videos about them. And the Yamaha P255s are excellent keyboards. They are. They're excellent appliances, machines. If you don't want to call them a musical instrument. They do a great job. They have a wonderful, warm, rich, baby grand sound. And if that doesn't satisfy you just from the speakers, you can hook them up to... Uh, um, to a subwoofer or to a monitor, and you can rattle the windows if you want to. So, I'm sorry, but I do believe that there's place, times and places, like, say, District Music Festival, where you're going to have them for accompaniment where they are just fine. Or if you're going to have them at home, where you want to drive everybody nuts, and you want to put on headphones, um, and not bother everybody in the house playing the Hungarian Rhapsody for the, you know, 50th time, uh, that's where they excel. Or you live in an apartment building where everybody doesn't want to hear through the floor from your soundboard you playing all the time. I believe that these pianos stand right in there. I think they are a good value. And that's the key. They're a good value. I mean, they have great sound. Now, are they the M-Series for the um, Kawaii? No. Those are outstanding digital keyboards and very pricey. Are these the high-end uh, uh, Yamahas, the NU1s through the NU4? No. Those are expensive. They're like $10,000 keyboards. But for uh, several grand, these are nice keyboards. They really are. And they, do, they have excellent quality of sound. I've played everything. In college, I've played in every practice room. And there's some keyboards that had a brighter sound. Some ke keyboards had a really muffled sound. Uh, some keyboard uh, keyboards, uh, um, their pedals clunk. And that's one thing I noticed. When I was, you can tell the difference between a uh, uh, what they like to call a real keyboard and a digital. Because when you're playing a digital, you don't hear that creaking and thumping of the pedal when, you know, of a, of a real keyboard, I guess. The bottom line is, I think it's a very complicated complicated argument. I believe there's a place for a full grand piano, but not in a little classroom when you're doing an adjudication at a festival. I'm just saying. Uh, these keyboards never go out of tune, and from what I've heard, they last and they last and they last. So I am very happy with my Yamaha purchases. I've played them. Um, I've had my wife experiment with one and play it at, ch uh, at church, and it works great. Um, do I think acoustic pianos are superior? For performance, yes. For adjudications and practice, no. I think the better option a lot of the times would be a good value digital keyboard that has a good feel, piano feel to it uh, because of the things that I've discussed. Anyway, tell me what you think. Do you think I'm out of line that I should provide a... Um, an acoustic piano and, and spend $6,000 to buy all these acoustic pianos and spend every year that we host District Music Festival, we should pay $85 for them all to be tuned. 
Or do you think that a better value now is these digital keyboards that are really coming up in quality and luxury? They're impressive machines. And so anyway, um, I'd love to hear from you what your thoughts are. Um, I've taught piano lessons. I have a Kimball acoustic piano. Right now it's out of tune. It needs to be tuned. It's going to cost me 85 bucks. And I will say it does not have a better sound by any means than this Kawaii CE220. Or the Yamahas for that matter. It, they, they sound excellent. Uh, they have a very good feel and I'm impressed with them. And so when I closed my eyes and played the pianos today, played a little bit of classical, played a little bit of jazz, played some rock and roll. The only thing I noticed with the, the real pianos is the clunking of the pedals and how clunkety the pedals were versus the digital ones were quiet. I'm just saying. That's what I noticed. Anyway, Music Man from his Man Cave. Digital versus acoustic. Complicated question. It depends. Strictly depends on the situation and what you're going to use it for, how much space you have, and if you want to break your back trying to move a stupid upright piano that weighs a ton. Talk to you later. Bye.